Welcome back to Palo Alto, everybody. We're here at SuperCloud 7 wrapping up. We got our closing keynote with Benoit Dajaville, who's the visionary co-founder of Snowflake and the president of products. Thank you so much for coming back. Yeah, hi, Dave. We're Great really to happy to be here. Well, we got some news today. You guys announced uh, that, you, well, you said at a summit in June that within 90 days, you would uh, have uh, Polaris and in, in, in yeah. open pu public preview. Not, not public preview, but open GA, yes. I would call it. You beat that, it was less than 90 yes, days. Yes, 60 days. 60 days, congratulations. Um, some people no. didn't believe that we would do it in 90 days. We did it in 60 days, so I'm very happy about that. Tell us about the news and, and, and we, how you did it. It's two, two yeah. different things that we announced today, the okay. same day. One is that we fully open source, you know, Polaris, so you can access Polaris as an open source, you know, product and get access to the Git repo of Polaris. Uh, it's on the Apache 2.0 licensing. And uh, the second announcement, which is which which is very related, is that we are also running this open source uh, uh, Polaris in in Snowflake as as a Snowflake. You know, uh, um, you can create a Polaris account and deploy Polaris. You know, via Snowflake. So just to show that 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 Polaris is fully functional and we are public preview. We announced public preview, so you can you know use it also and see how how it works uh, within Snowflake. So that's what people would call a first-class citizen inside of Snowflake? Is that yes, it? it's, a, it's an independent product. You know, my, my, I always, said, I always um, say that I'm very happy because I'm president of one product, which is Snowflake. Now we have two products which are, you know, <laughs> separate. One is the Snowflake, you know, regular Snowflake uh, AI data cloud. And, and the other product is, is Polaris as an independent catalog that you can deploy without using the rest of Snowflake. But I don't need Snowflake to run no. Polaris, correct? No, that's the, the yes, that exactly. Now, I have to ask you, so. And I, it's open source, so you can deploy it, you know, in your, you know. Full uh, yeah. Apache yes. 2.0. Okay, I have to ask you, because I was, you were off camera clarifying me. I have characterized Polaris as, sometimes I say just, don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Just the technical <laughs> metadata and the, of the part of the governance, but you you want to sort of put a finer point on that. Yeah. So so let, let me quickly describe what Polaris is is is, is, is the first version 1.0 of Polaris, if you want, because of course we we are and a lot of people are going to contribute to Pol Polaris, uh, but the first version has full uh, rollback access, uh, role-based access control. All right, we have you know roles, and you can create catalog roles and give privilege and give privilege to whoever access you know this 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 catalog. So so it has full governance at that layer, at the metadata layer. The other governance it has is we support we support all the free clouds. Um, so Amazon, you know Google Storage and and uh, Azure, uh, Blob Storage. Uh, and we vet vent uh, credentials for this storage. So not only it's a logical, you know, uh, access control uh, uh, um, um, policies, but, but also at the storage la layer, when you access, you know, a files on, on, you know, tables, iceberg, so it's pure iceberg. Uh, when you access this table, whether you read them, write them, will give you, provide the tools, only the credential, the minimum credentials to access these files. Is a read, if you have only read permission, will only give you read privilege on the storage, or, or if you have read and write, it will give you a read or write and privilege. So we then, you know, Polaris will then all the credentials, uh, storage credentials. And as I said, we support all the free clouds. Okay, but now Horizon is yes. not open source. What, help people understand the functionality that I get with Horizon that's not available in Polaris. Yes, so, so Horizon first provides, you know, very fine uh, role-based access control to objects in the Snowflake ecosystem. And these objects are going way beyond uh, what you can find, you know, which is iceberg tables and views, what you can find in a Polaris uh, catalog. That's, that's number one. Second is uh, we have, you know, fine-grained access control on tables, so you can define you know, policies, uh, uh, rule-based policy to say, for example, that group can only see this subset of, of data, you can mask colons. So all this, 
these things are not in Polaris, and they are not, not in Polaris because we didn't want to open source, you know, that part is just because we first need to agree between all the tools that, you know, this is the way to define this policy because if they are in Polaris but no one, you know, uh, um, it, it, these rules are bypassed right at the end, you, you, you provide the tool direct access to, to the table, so if they don't apply these policies, it, it's, it's not very useful. So, so we first need, you know, to push, you know, this fine grain access control uh, policies and, and make that open source. And so this is a process, right? Um, that, that's Polaris uh, uh, will probably evolve in, and, and, you know, we'll push, you know, for, for that in the open source. So I know you're very proud of, you, you won't release yes. wine before it's time, as uh, Ernest and Julio Gallo would say. Uh, a lot has happened um, in the past year. You guys announced uh, open sourcing Polaris, you had a, a big, a lot of Gen AI announcements, which we can get into at Summit. Uh, Databricks uh, open sourced uh, Unity shortly thereafter. They, I like they, to say they, something about they, that they, one. They buy Tabular. <laughs> I would like to ask you about that. So all these things happen in like within 30 days, within two weeks even. So what has the customer reaction been to this? What's, what's your reaction? What's the customer reaction? What would you like to say? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so our motivation, I cannot talk about, you know, um, Databricks and sure. their announcement, but why we are, you know, embracing, you know, Iceberg and Open Data and Polaris, you know, pushing that, you know, all the way to the catalog is because our customers or a class of our customers is really asking us for interoperability between tools, right? Many tools accessing the, the same data and they want to have a solution and they want, you know, Snowflake to be one of these tools uh, uh, or one of these, you know, system accessing this open data. So we want to participate in, in into that. Uh, they have also huge investments, you know, prior investment in Hadoop, in, in, in lakes. So, so, so they ask us, you know, to come to their data versus, you know, their data come to us. And they want to avoid, you know, vendor lock-in, which is, a, you know, a very uh, fair point. Um, so we are, we have been investing in Iceberg for many years now. And we are moving to the catalog because we, realize that the catalog is the next, you know, ne next step. It's, it's okay to have, you know, tables in open format, but you need to know where these tables are. You need to provide governance on top of these tables, which, which is very important. So we want to bring, you know, governance to open and it's, it's kind of a contradictory world. You know, on one hand, you want to open your data, but on the other hand, you want to have, you know, full governance and control. So we have a unique expertise in the governance area, and we think that we can, you know, have, have people benefit from this expertise and, and put this expertise, you know, um, uh, towards, you know, the, the open data. Um, so as, as analysts, sometimes we say things in the extreme, and then we act like two-handed lawyers. On the one hand, on the other hand, that's the way we hedge. Yes. Um, and so, when you when you think about um, all this activity uh, that's going on in the marketplace, it's it's not black or white. It's not never binary. You know, it's this evolution. And so, how do you see customers adopting open table formats? I mean, obviously, Iceberg has a lot of interest, yes. but when you ask people how you're going to govern it, they don't really have a great answer yet. So what would you, what do you, what would you like to see and what do you expect to see in terms of the-, the Yeah, we, 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 we really want to meet customers where they are and, and we heard that many times, exactly what you are asking, you know, I want to use open, you know, open uh, tables and open format, file format, and have direct access to my data, but I want governance, right? So I want Snowflake, <laughs> but I want, you know, open. So, so we are really trying hard, you know, to push uh, uh, that governance, you know, to the open, you know, um, o open data. Uh, with Polaris, and I think Polaris is going to be the place where this governance will be defined and enforced. And, and we, we made a huge, you know, step towards uh, today. We announced it, uh, um, that with, you know, role-based role -based access control, you know, credential vendings for all the cloud, you know, providers. And, but, but this is, you know, just, you know, one, one step. As I say, this is version 1.0. Okay, uh, another question. We put forth the premise, and I'd love to bounce this off you, that 
the points of control is shifting from the database management system to the, to the governance layer. Um, and again, it's not yeah. binary, uh, but the value is not necessarily you know, shifting there because of your open sourcing. Of course, some of the value stays inside, but the real value is going to that application layer where you're now want to be, you say the app store for the enterprise, for yes. example. So building intelligent data apps on top of the platform seems to be the next point of, of value. You announced a, a lot of capabilities and tools, Cortex and other capabilities at Summit. Uh, and you have many more developers now um, yeah. joining in. Uh, what's your vision there and how does that playing out? Now th this is a critical part of you know why we have been our name is the AI data cloud is, is because a cloud is somewhere where applications are running, right? Applications are running in the cloud. This is the difference with a platform where applications are running on top of a platform. We want to be a cloud where applications are directly executing in our cloud. And, and for that, if you think about how we build Snowflake, we build it kind of you know, bottom up. Uh, we started with the data and we wanted to support all types of data, you know, from structured data to completely unstructured data. Unstructured data is, is any file, right? PDF documents and images, videos. Uh, and that, that's, you know, all the, the, the different types of data, but also open uh, data uh, too, and also transactional data and analytical data. When you talk about application, you know, transactional data is, is critical. Uh, so it starts with data, then there is, you know, code, and what can you do with this data? R workload that you can run, uh, and that also is a very important aspect. Uh, um, we have, you know, you can create this data, so this is our data flow engine, and you can create this data in SQL in, with Snowflake, but in Python data frame, Java data frame, but it's not only about querying data, right? If you r want to run application in the cloud, uh, you need to you know, this application has code and, and applications generally, they have services and microservices. So this is containerization of code. We can run full containers. You can run Postgres in, in, in Snowflake Cloud. Uh, you can run, you know, any, uh, you can run even rational AI uh, uh, as an application directly, you know, deployed in, in these container services. So we call it Snowpark Container Services. On top of that, you, you, we, we say AI is, is going to be critical for these applications to easily access data and, and, and for users to connect with data in uh, not only with SQL or you know, Python data frames, right? Most business users, they, they don't know how to talk. So the AI layer is, is a way to, to accelerate that. So this is all our Cortex layer and it's completely serverless. It, by the way, everything about compute in Snowflake is completely serverless in our cloud and, and Cortex is, is even pushing that further where you can access all this functionality, run whatever model you, you choose or you know, doing search, RAG, all of these, all these services or this high level function like summarization of text, all of this is completely serverless. You can use them from your application. So these are APIs that you can use inside your application. And of course, governance, you talk about governance, how governance is, is critical. So Snowflake, you know, has all the governance layer from, you know, data security all the way to role-based access control and fine-grained security. And the last layer, which is probably the, the, the most important to me is, is the collaboration and how you can source these applications. You, you know, we, we really want application to come to the data. If you think about the, the world of application and services that you use, you have to push your, your data to these services. We want, you know, we want to build the iPhone you know, for data where you can go to our app store. We, we don't call it the app store. We name it the marketplace, but the Snowflake marketplace, you can, you know, you can source you know, thousands of applications there. You, you can install these applications. Rational AI is, is one of those. You can install them in your account. They run, you know, like the you know, applications are running on your cell phone. And, and really the vision is, is that like, you know, an iPhone where what makes your iPhone unique is, is not the iPhone itself. It, it's important, but it's, it's not, it's, it's what it enables. It enables all these applications to run and, and you use your iPhone daily because you use all these applications. So this is what we want to create and of course, what makes the iPhone unique for an application is that how easy it is to create an application on an iPhone because you have all these services that the platform and the cloud, you know, our cloud provides. So 
so, so that, that's, that's the vision, is, is really create the iPhone of, of, of data applications. So it's interesting when we talk about open and closed, yes. it's all in the mind of the, the beholder. I mean, I think you would agree that Apple is a closed system, yes. but the functionality that you get from the App Store and those applications far outweighs you know, the consumer's concern about getting locked in. There's obviously competition, so you have to be, they have to be cost effective. You deal with that all the time. The cloud vendors deal with optimization. Uh, but is that the right way to think about it? That as long as the utility that you can attract with your ecosystem on top of the Snowflake platform, out, and the value that you can help create as an ecosystem outweighs the fear of lock-in, you will address that concern. Is that a fair way to think about it? No, it, it's a fair, I mean, you, you, you you use open for a reason, right? You know, we talked about locked in, we talk about interoperation with, with different tools. That, that's a very good reason to use open data. Uh, at the same time, uh, there are a lot of, 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 of places where you don't need that necessarily, where you want, you know, this platform to completely manage completely self-manage everything. You don't want to worry about you know, governance. You don't want to worry about security. You don't want to be worrying about storage, right? You, you want you know, an appliance that has everything you know, for you. And a lot of applications, they don't really care to manage all of this, right? You, you have to think these applications are, are completely self-managed by the platform, right? There is no someone, you know, operate, the, 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 there is no engineering team running these application. You install them, you know, on your Snowflake iPhone, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And, and they are completely running, you know, by themselves and they are completely self-managed. And to get this self-management, you, you cannot have, you know, all the complexity and all the security, you know, uh, trade-off that, that, that opens. So I, I think it, it really depends on the use case and, and, and you know, Snowflake is good at both. Um, um. When you started the company, you, Thierry, and the other co-founder, did you envision Snowflake, um, A, getting to this point, and B, did you, did you model, have a mental model of, of other companies? I mean, obviously you used to work at Oracle, incredibly successful company, or Apple, other companies that you had a mental model that you wanted to sort of emulate. So, so I would say Thierry loves Apple and the simplicity, and I love simplicity and, and, and you know, of, you know, not pushing complexity to end users, you know, the platform. I, I always say, you know, Snowflake is simple, not because it's simple, actually it's super complicated inside, mm -hmm. right? To, to remove complexity, you have to have, a, you have to be a very sophisticated system. So yes, if, if you think about it, Apple is, is really a role model in that sense. You know, it takes the complexity in and makes it simple, you know, both for the end users, but also for people who are creating these applications. And, and that what makes, you know, Apple and the iPhone, you know, unique in, in that way. Uh, uh, at the same time, we, we are, you know, in a very diverse world where people want to, to have, you know, flexibility, they want to have, uh, um, you know, they want to, to operate their system. So, so we need to, we, we need to open Snowflake also. So, so we, we are, you know, doing both. And I think we are doing both, you know, very well. Um, and it's important, it's a question of choice. Um, yeah, thank you. Last question. What would you like to be able to say 12 months from now at SuperCloud 8 or 9 or 10 <laughs> that you, you're not able to say today? Ah, that's a great question. You know, I, I think I really want to make you know that vision very concrete and and you know really say that we have you know hundreds of thousands of applications running in our cloud. We are we are not yet there, uh, so, so so we have a lot of work to do there and and to finalize this vision of of, of really this AI data cloud uh, where we can make it completely like trivial. Uh, uh, to write an application and to deliver that application on marketplace. We have, you know, vendors uh, uh, who are providing, I mean, rational AI is one. Uh, um, um, so, so we have many applications running, but not enough. So, so I really want, you know, people to, you know, the, the, the logic to come to the data uh, um, and, and, and make it super simple. Um, Benoit, thanks so much. 
for coming back on SuperCloud. You've been a, a, a great contributor to our community. Really appreciate your time. Yes, thank you, Dave. Uh, you're very welcome. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back to wrap up SuperCloud 7 live from Palo Alto. This is Dave Vellante. Be right back. Thank you.